Hey, what is up everybody? This is Steven Breach coming to you here today. Um, last night, one hell of a night. Uh, Niners went out there, they did what they needed to do. Um, they got the win against the Seahawks. It's, it's hard to believe that uh, the last five games against the Seahawks, the Niners have been able to pull it out. I remember for years, those damn Seahawks, um, they had our number. That was one of the reasons why, you know, me and little Alex, we just didn't see eye to eye for the longest time. Um, it was just, I hate it that that team was getting the best of us. They were a damn good team for a long, long time. And uh, we'll have to see what, what they do to go out there and, and, and fix it. They put up a hell of a game against us uh, with Drew Locke running around. I'm not sure if it was Drew Locke's Superman game or if uh, Drew Locke just uh, surprised us because we really didn't know that he was going to play until almost the morning of. I don't even really remember what it was that took Geno Smith out of the game. But uh, then we fall back and we go to the nightcap. Uh, where we see uh, the Dallas Cowboys show up as of, uh, to me, like the Dallas Cowboys that were supposed to be almost two years ago. Um, I remember when I really thought that Dallas had a chance to win the Super Bowl two years ago. Uh, in, my fantasy, in my fantasy league, I drafted uh, Dak. I was not able to get Ezekiel Elliott, but I, I took CeeDee Lamb. Um, I took um, their other, another one, at that time he was a number one receiver. Um, he came from uh, came from Oakland. Um, I had him, and then somehow I ended up with Pollard, and I was like the super cowboy team. And uh, certain weeks I blew everybody out of the water, and other weeks they, they couldn't do anything. But they they went out there and they beat the Eagles. So for the first time this season, the Niners are back where they were supposed to be, where they were kind of seated at in the off season as like the number one team in the league. Um, we took that, you know, short little three-week bump where we lost those games um, to the Vikings, uh, the Browns, and the Bengals, and um, we're right back up there. But you know, now um, we got this Arizona game. We got a game against uh, uh, the Washington, the Commanders. We got a game against the Ravens on Christmas. Uh, we got a Rams game to finish out the year. Um, we don't really have a cakewalk to the finish kind of like the eagles the eagles are going to have some games that uh you know all they have to kind of do is show up um so you know that for us it's it's kind of the cardinals cardinals they started the season you know without having um their number one quarterback uh dobbs uh, filled in he played pretty good for him good enough that washington decided to bring him over dobbs had like a little tinkle uh, to, you know sprinkle of like twinkle dust on him for those first few weeks but it was almost like the magic wore off he ended up getting pulled out of the game uh in washington yesterday that that barn burner of a game that finished three to zero with the raiders um the guy who played quarterback for us one of the years that garoppolo got hurt um ended up going into the game and i guess getting the win uh, for them, you know, uh, that big three to zero, uh, big one for them. But, um, you know, the Cardinals, they are what they are. I mean, they're, they're not a very good football team. I'm guessing that they're just trying to get through the season. You know, they had the injury to Kyler Murray late last year. Um, they knew that he wasn't going to be there for the beginning half of the season. They might have just kind of scrapped it and said, hey, at least we're going to have our quarterback. We'll get a good draft pick. Uh, we'll be able to fill out our our, um, our board from there and, and kind of rebuild this thing and see back where we're going from. But I'm not going to look forward, uh, you know, to that Cardinals game. It's kind of like a walk in the park. Um, you know, we beat the shit out of the Seahawks the first time we played them on Thanksgiving. It was almost like they had a bowl full of, like, stuffing mashed potatoes and gravy right before that game because we hit them right in the mouth. And we had, like, a 24-7 lead on them before, you know, they even knew what was going on. We just, you know, points, 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 boom, boom, boom. Sometimes the offense, you know, really does just work like that. And um, I don't know. I'm not going to just walk in and think that we're just going to moonwalk all over the Arizona Cardinals. You know, these guys are pro football players. They got respect. They're all fighting to make sure that they're going to be – on this team or another team next year and whether if they're looking for personal stats or team stats 
uh, to build things up, they're, they're gonna be going out there. But the key from here on out is we just have to just settle down, you know, make sure that the game in front of us is 49er football, play it our style of game, and just know, um, you know, we can't give up the big plays on offense, um, you know, uh, we, we basically got to have that defensive line getting in on the quarterback mostly almost every play and uh, getting in their face because um, uh, I know that the word on the street is that we're going to re-sign the guy who came from the Chargers. He was on our team a couple of years ago. Uh, he was on our team for three seasons, two different seasons. He only played one game. And then uh, I think in 2020, he played almost every game for us. But that was kind of his deal when he was with the Chargers, that he just was always injured. I think his last name was Price. Something close to that. Dude had some skill coming out of college. Chargers were really looking forward to having him. 49ers, when they brought him over, thought they were going to find a way to fix him. But that guy is like the old man's, you know, award that he gets, you know, uh, you know brought in on the Christmas story. It's got fragility stamped all over it. Um, Ward's going to be down, um, pulling his groin. Um, definitely our number one cornerback. We already know that we don't really have safeties. Our secondary is just, whew. But I think if that, that linebacker core as well as that defensive line core gets into a quarterback's face just consistently, we're not really worried about giving up that big pass. Um, but uh, that, that's got to be the one thing that we're worried about more than anything. If we, if we can have our offense on the field, I think McCaffrey can wear down teams uh, to the point that we can get something going. Brandon Ayuk last week went over 1,000 yards for the second season in a row. Um, it's going to be a hard decision what we do at the end of this year. I know that we've already signed a lot of our key guys. Uh, we got a lot more key guys out there. Brandon Ayuk is somebody that I've really become a fan of. Last year, he put this team on uh, his back uh, when um, Debo uh, was down. With Debo, we ended up giving that big money deal to the year before last uh, to get him out there. Um, and that was kind of like a big process. I don't think Debo is really uh, the kind of a guy that you just cut ties with. Uh, you just basically got to find a way to, to trade him. But um, that, that even that, I mean, yesterday he took that game over. He, you know, he ran um, the ball in for a touchdown. Uh, and, you know, basically being used as a running back because he was used almost, almost exclusively um, when uh, before McCaffrey got there. Um, but I, I just don't want to lose Brandon Knight. There was there was rumors um, out. Uh, that we were going to uh, trade him to the Colts um, last offseason. And uh, I just didn't want to see that. So uh, I hope there's some magical glue uh, to get out there. Juan Jennings is a guy that I feel like is one of my favorite guys on the team. But I'm not really at a spot that I want uh, <laughs> you know, Juan Jennings to try and fill in for Brandon Ayuk. Uh, I think that he's a special guy. I understand that a lot of teams think that he might be, you know, a good fit for their team or even can become uh, his number one. And I don't want to stop the guy from getting paid. Um, so that, that's that's a big time decision. And in my mind, I think that they're gonna want to like side uh, that you know they have that big contract with Debo that might be hard to move. Um, but then again, some other teams might just be able to understand that you know we have. You know, both these studs, and um, it's not like you know what's wrong with them. Why don't you want them? Uh, kind of deal. So that's a that's a big tough decision coming for them. And uh, you know, I don't know. I'd love to keep them, but I think I understand the, the football side of it. He's got to go off, and he's going to get paid big money <laughs> somewhere else. So we got to win this thing uh, while he's still there. So let's, let's just finish the story. Um, ride this out to the end and then um, you know hey take it one week at a time all we can do is just win the game that's ahead of us and just keep going as of right now we're in the driver's seat everybody else behind us looking for us to um, you know to mess up somewhere along the way so hopefully it don't happen peace out